is an opportunity for the church. This is an opportunity for us, for us to see possibly the greatest harvest that we've ever seen because the whole world is afraid. The whole world is a lot of big cities around the world. I've been to uh, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Singapore, Manila, and they're big, they were big cities back when I was there in the 70s, and now they are huge. And all these large metropolitan centers are shut down. And uh, there's, if you look at, go online, you can see some of the streets in L.A. and uh, New York and Chicago. And it's, they're, they look like ghost towns almost. It's almost like one of the movies, you know, apocalyptic movies that they've been making for years now. Uh, except there's not a bunch of zombies running around the streets, you know. But there's, there's a lot of scared people right now. And I believe it's our time. To share the love of God. I know with my neighbors, we have a lot of neighbors that walk around the neighborhood. And I've been talking to them. And I ask them, how are you doing? And they all have such a good attitude. You know, they say, we're doing great. You know, and we, you know, people I never talked to, we wave at each other. Now we're talking. Uh, and that's a great opportunity. I've been able to introduce myself to some of them. They know I'm the pastor here. And I tell them that we're praying for them. I even stopped by uh, Congressman Grijalva's office this week and told him, uh, your cousin, Eddie, uh, told them, uh, I'm, we're praying for you guys. And they said, thank, they were so nice. They said, thanks to tell congressman, we're praying for him. And we're praying for all our congressmen, the president and vice president and everybody. Amen. Amen. But uh, I'm going to share a, a strategy. But before we do, how many know somebody who needs prayer? Amen. <clears throat> we all know somebody that needs uh, prayer. I, I talked to my niece yesterday, Victoria. Uh, she's uh, in the beginning stages of finishing her uh, treatment and uh, let's pray for her uh, sh- and that the Lord will just she really looks good when we saw her recently uh, she looks great and she sounds great and she always tells me tell the church thank you for praying and she says one of these days I want to go and, and tell them personally uh, so pray for her once this is all over she also wants me to baptize her in her swimming pool so uh, <laughs> that's going to be fun uh, but con- thanks again. I want to thank you as her nephew. I've known Victoria since she was her her uncle. I want to tell her, I want to let you know that I've known her since she was a, a child. And she was always a very precious uh, little girl. And now she's an amazing young woman and has two children. And uh, they love the Lord. And so keep keep them. And she also said pray for her husband because he's a businessman. And uh he hires migrant workers. You know, they, they come here legally to work. And uh, a lot of them are, are having to go back to Mexico. And he doesn't know when they're going to come back. So uh, she said pray for his business uh, because uh, that every, every, a lot of businesses are suffering right now. Amen. So let's pray. There's a lot of things we need to pray about. So we're going to pray this morning. And then this week the church will be open like this. said 6 to 8. And uh, we'll be praying. If you can't make it. Designate that time at home to pray. If you can fast, uh, Bill Johnson told his church, fast one day. You know, if you can just fast one day. If you're on a special diet or, you're, you know, you have an illness and you can't fast, we understand. Uh, pray. But if you are healthy and you can fast a, a meal, uh, a meal a day, uh, I think most most of us won't won't suffer too much if we if we fast one meal uh, or a meal every day or a day or more uh, but uh, I really believe that's a good strategy amen so we're going to pray and then we'll collect this offering for those of you watching online there are people watching online we now have a, a, a link where you can give online to Sun Life we finally went to the bank and Jonathan set that up so uh, anyway uh, <clears throat> you can go online and, and give there And so, praise God. Amen? Let's pray. So, you know somebody needs prayer? We're going to pray. Father, um, we are here as your people because we know that you love us. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, you are with us. You said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The very first thing we want to do is we come against this horrible attack on humanity. We pray for... uh, nations that are suffering right now, people that have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are uh, in pain right now or have some type of illness. We pray for Victoria. We pray for friends or family or people we know that have cancer. 
uh, or diabetes or arthritis, Lord, we pray for them right now. We pray for uh, great miracles, Lord, to happen in people's lives. But our first uh, stance and posture is we pray the blood of Jesus to cover our loved ones, our families, our city, our state, our nation, and the nations, especially the hard-hit nations, but all the other nations that it's been a very little uh, uh, even reported cases of this virus in those nations. And we thank God for that. We pray those nations would be divinely protected, Father. So we, we lift up our president and we lift up our, our vice president and the, the, the great team that they've put together to, uh, to help, uh, resolve, help resolve this problem. But we know it's you and we thank you that last uh, Sunday the president said that that would be a, a national day of prayer. We thank you that people are praying. Uh, so we pray with all the millions and billions of believers around the world that are praying against this this morning. We agree, we set our faith in agreement with their faith that this virus will pass sooner than later. And we pray for protection for uh, these areas that are hard hit. We pray that it would uh, start to go down the way it started to go down. It's starting to go down in China where there has been no reported new cases in China. We rejoice in that. But we pray that it it would start uh, to uh, go down now and level off and that... uh, uh, our nations and the nations that are, have been so f- affected by this can uh, start functioning again, Father. We pray for our health care physicians and, and providers and nurses and uh, technicians. Protect them, Father. We thank you for them. We thank you for their awesome work. We thank you for anybody here in the church that works in those areas, uh, delicate areas, and first responders, that you divinely protect them with your wings of protection and your precious blood, Jesus. So, Lord, we pray this morning uh, for these things. We pray for people to come to know Jesus. We pray, God, that this would be a a catalyst for the greatest revival, the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen. And I believe that that's very probable. I I actually believe that something is going, something very good in the kingdom is going to result out of this, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, as we give our offerings, we thank you for... Uh, the income that you give us. We thank you for our jobs and we thank you for your provision. We now bring our tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in your house. And we pray now that you would open the floodgates of heaven and let let it start raining of your presence and your goodness and your healing and your protection upon us and your people all over all over the world. In Jesus' name, amen. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know no I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide, and I not a captain to the light. Oh, I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. No, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's 
power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance with me. Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance with me. Stand in your love. When I stand in your love, when I stand. Amen. Amen. I've been looking at different websites to see how many churches have canceled, and uh, a lot of churches have canceled services, and most of them have online uh, services. Thank God we do. So uh, if uh, there's a mandate that says we can't hold services, we'll go online and we'll let you know. Uh, Check the website, and we'll keep you posted on the website. Uh, But uh, like I said, uh, we are going to... uh, Continue to pray. I believe the best thing that we can pray, the, the best thing we can do right now is pray. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. And I uh, ask you to join us and agree in prayer. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information that you can get uh, online and uh, go on those websites and uh, get all the information. And uh, we're just expecting uh, something good is happening, even though it seems like something bad is happening. Amen? I want to share with you on mighty weapons. I was, we're all doing a lot of thinking and praying, amen? With so many people that are, so many businesses that are closed, restaurants you can take out, but a lot of restaurants uh, uh, are closed, and a lot of businesses are closed. Uh, So, uh, as a result, all over, people are are having to spend time with their families, having to spend time at home, having to spend time thinking about their own uh, life, their own mortality. And uh, I believe the Lord is using this uh, for something great. Uh, I was looking at a, a prophecy by a prophet. His name is Bob Jones. And uh, Bob just passed away, uh, I think, a, a year or two ago. But he prophesied several years ago, I don't know if it was three, four years ago, he said, and he was very accurate, he's been known for a lot of uh, very powerful predictions, he said, when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, that is going to usher in the greatest end time revival that we've ever seen. And he was an old guy, and a very, like I said, very accurate uh, prophetic brother, prophetic voice to the church, and we all know who won the Kansas City Chiefs, amen? And it is, it's, it's very interesting that the quarterback uh, is a Christian, and, and I thought they were going to lose. We were watching the game, and I said, man, this game's over in the fourth quarter, and they came back with a miraculous finish, and that prophecy 
I'm, I'm more excited now. I was excited they won then because I've never been a San Francisco fan. <laughs> but uh, I was more excited at the end of the game because I started doing some research and found out that, that the quarterback, this young man, has been a Christian since he was a kid. And uh, his dad was a professional pitcher in Major League Baseball. And so uh, I really uh, got excited. But when I read that prophecy, I said, now I know why I got so excited. Because that only confirmed that prophetic word that we were going to see a great harvest. And then this thing happens. And what's everybody doing now? Their home they're watching online, all the stadiums are closed, all NBA, can't, you know, they're not having basketball. Major League Baseball is postponing, they don't know when. Uh, all, of course, March Madness, and, you know, we're all bummed out about that. <laughs> and, uh, and all these sporting events, entertainment, casinos, movie theaters, gyms, wherever people Go. The only place that's open right now are grocery stores and Walmart and Costco. And I heard it's a mad. I haven't been to Costco or, or uh, but I was watching online in California. And there was a line. Uh, I remember once we went to see the, the Do- L.A. Dodgers play when uh, Sandy Koufax was pitching. And there was a huge line in the L.A. freeway on the five just to wait to get into Dodger Stadium to watch the Dodgers play. And that's the way it looked. At this Costco, it looked like they were going to a, a major league, or you know, sporting event, and it was to go buy toilet paper, you know. <laughs> and I said, "Wow, man, that's that's crazy." But and and then I've been thinking about this whole thing about us gathering and everybody's paranoid. And I, but you go to the, these stores and they're wall to wall people, you know, to go shopping and to go just buy milk or eggs or <laughs> you know something and. Uh, and so I, I said, uh, you know, we need to eat, so they got to stay open, right? Uh, so, and I'm not making light of any of this. You know, it's, it's it, a lot of scared people, but I want to give you a word of, of encouragement, a word of hope. And so let's turn to 2 Corinthians. I love this scripture uh, because we're in a war. And Paul said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And the principalities and the powers and the wicked rulers and spiritual forces in high places, that's our warfare. That's, our, that's who we're fighting. We're not fighting people. We're not uh, fighting a physical army. We're fighting a spiritual war. And Paul said, for though, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God. If you underline your Bibles, underline mighty. Before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. And so I really believe that this war that we're in, we need to understand that we have some mighty weapons. And with these weapons, we can destroy any enemy stronghold. We know what a stronghold was. If you've done any study, they were like these high towers in the city walls, and from those high towers, they could see, but it, it was also a place where the snipers, the uh, archers, and they could take out, you know, key enemy leaders, and, but they were also for watching. And so these are strongholds that the enemy forms in the thinking of a culture. And right now, if you notice, all the gods of our culture are falling. It's nothing that I'm rejoicing about, but all the things that we worship and all the things that, uh, that people in our culture look at as very important, the entertainment industry, you know, it's right now at a standstill. And so I believe that in the midst of everything that's going on, the church, this is the church's opportunity to rise and to seize the moment. This is the time for the church to put the armor on, to take the mighty weapons that God has given us and go to battle. A few years ago, I I was part of a prayer group of these pastors in town. And I think it was well-meaning, but I think it was, uh, I think a misunderstanding of what the scriptures say. And uh, the brother that was in charge of it, he says, I hear so much of this warfare talk. And 
and, uh, and it, it, you know, like it bothered him. And uh, I didn't say anything to him, but I, and I kind of understood where he was coming from. But it's not about people. It's not about, you know, an organization. It's not about an army. It's not about, a, you know, these things. It's about spiritual entities. There are demons. When Jesus was ministering, how many times would he walk into a situation and a demon would cry out? Or a person would be sick because there was some type of spiritual force or some type of evil spirit that had that person mute or they were deaf or they were some type of physical illness and Jesus would cast out the demon and what would happen to the person? They were free. The sickness would leave. The deafness was gone. The the deaf mute was able to speak and hear because there was a demon that had him in that condition. And I believe that we need to start looking at this whole thing as a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual battle that we're in. It's a war and it's time for us to take the armor and put it on, and then look at the Word of God, and find out what are our weapons, they're mighty, the Bible says, to destroy the enemy. Amen? And I really believe that, that the enemy has weapons, just like we have weapons, the enemy, and how many believe one of the greatest weapons that the devil has is what? Fear. Fear right now is a pandemic. I was listening to a psychologist on one of the networks, and she was really... I liked her. She, she was, you know, really had a good view about this. And she said, these things have always happened in history. And she says, but I, what I see right now that's, that really concerns me, she says, there's a pandemic of anxiety. And uh, I said, there's a pandemic of fear. I was listening to the governor of New York. I really liked what he said. He said, I was there when Andrew happened, Hurricane Andrew, and it was so devastating to Florida. And so many people uh, were killed and lost their homes and everything, and it was, a, it was a horrible time. And if you've ever seen pictures of Andrew, I mean, it was like communities or neighborhoods were leveled, and there was nothing standing, just twigs and, you know, foundations of homes. And, and he said, he says, what we need to understand is... Our, our greatest battle right now is against fear. And I said, right on, governor. You know, and I'm praying for him. I'm praying for these governors. The governor of California, same thing. And, and, uh, and I believe that we need to pray for these leaders. But I, I do agree that uh, the Bible is so true. For God, we shared this last week. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound judgment. So the devil will use fear to immobilize God's people, to uh, get the army of the Lord so afraid that we won't do anything. So this is not a time to give in to that weapon of the enemy of fear, but to conquer that fear with what? With faith, with love. We have spiritual weapons to counter that attack. Amen? We have mighty weapons, and they are for the overthrow of enemy strongholds. So we need to understand that our enemy, though, even though he has weapons, they've been disarmed. The enemy has been disarmed. Look what it says here. It says, God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in him, And in it, the cross. So to me, the enemy has no weapons to touch you. He cannot touch the believer. But he does when the believer does not know what our weapons are. When the believer does not know that he's disarmed. Jesus When he rises from the dead, what does he tell John? He says, I have the keys of hell, death, and the grave. The Bible says that the last enemy is to be destroyed is what? Death. Death, 
I've always said, I say this at funerals, I've said it to you, I've told people in conversations, death was never our lot in life. We were not created to die. We're made in the image of God and God is eternal. And we are created in the eternal image of God to live forever. Adam was created to live forever. And yet, because of the fall, people die. But Jesus came and what did he do? He crushed the head of the serpent. And when he rises, he says, I have the keys of hell, death, and the grave. So, like Noni said earlier, man, we don't have anything to fear. Amen? Because we know the Lord. And if we die, we know where we're going. Now, nobody wants to die. I've always said this. No believer should die before our time. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die and then to be judged. And so we all have an appointed time, but I believe every believer, according to Psalm 91, should live a long, healthy life. You might say, well, why did my cousin die at 46 years of age? Or why did my brother die at 46? Or why did my other bride, brother die at 53? Or another br- brother died at 68? Or my, you know, and all these relatives, why did they, or friends, why did they die before their time? Or when they were young? Or why did a child die? I've done funerals for kids. They are not fun. And because they were not, man was not created to die. So when Jesus dies on the cross, what did he do to, the, to that last enemy of humanity to death? He crushed death. Amen? And now, when we know the Lord, if we do die, go through that door of death. I always said death is like a door. You enter that door, if you're a believer, you're instantly in the presence of God. I love to read these near-death experiences of people who've died and gone to heaven and came back and lived to talk about it. It's beautiful. So Jesus disarmed our enemy. So the only weapons that he has are weapons such as fear, anxiety, hopelessness, stress, anger, torment, terror. But the key for us right now is, like we said last Sunday on conquering fear, is fear not. I'm with you. When you go through the waters, you won't drown. When you go through the fire, you won't be burned, the Lord says. So no matter what's happening around us, the word of the Lord is, I'm with you in this time. Fear not. Amen? I told, I've said before, when I was in Okinawa and Vietnam was falling, and uh, we were on standby to go and evacuate any American citizens that were still in Saigon, and they'd wake us up at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, get your gear, and we all had our gear ready, we all had our weapon right there, I said, get your gear, he says, we're going to war, (laughs) and you get all your stuff, and then you go out there and wait for the helicopter, and say, false alarm, go back to bed. And we did that for, I don't know how many months, and man, it was an up and down, you know, we're going, no, we're not going, we're going, and we're not going, you know. And man, everybody was like, you know, on edge. Now, we knew we were, we were prepared, because all we did, <laughs> when you're overseas, all we did as an infantry unit, all you did for a year was just train and train and shoot and train and up in the jungles and hikes and training, and all we did was, so we were prepared but it was a drag, the, the emotional ups and downs. We're going, oh, no, no, we're not going. We're going, to, <clears throat> so you'd get scared, and then you'd get excited, and then you'd, get, you'd calm down. <laughs> and it was an emotional roller coaster. It was, it was worse. And I said, why don't we just go? <laughs> you know, it's better to just go and get it over with and be playing these games. And the, the enemy, that's what he uses. He uses those tactics of trying to get us all riled up, he wants us to be afraid. He wants us to be, have these emotional ups and downs because everybody is... Have you noticed that when you go to the store, I, I don't know about you, but when I've, when I've gone to the store, you know, everybody's pretty calm. And, and I say, I look at them and, and they're thinking and I like to smile at them. And sometimes I'll, I'll say something nice to them, you know, and, 
and, and try and be kind. And this is a time to shine the light, amen? Because everybody right now is thinking, what's going to happen next? You know, what's going to happen to the stock market? What's going to happen to our economy? What's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my business? What's going to happen to my job? There's a lot of uncertainty. So right now, this is a great opportunity for the church to take our weapons on, to take our weapons, our mighty weapons, and attack the enemy. We share with you uh, Psalm 91, and it is powerful. And I'm going to read not the whole thing again, but I'm going to read a few verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. Did you hear that? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, or my stronghold, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. For He will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with His pinions. So again, here the psalmist is saying, God is with me. I will not fear all these terrible things happening around me. It says he will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will, be, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. I've been watching online... <laughs> Almost every single message that I've heard in the last week has been on Psalm 91. Is that something? You think the Lord's speaking to us? He is. He says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. I know we read it last week, but... We need to read these scriptures regularly. Since Satan has no weapons, all he does is try to put fear in the hearts of God's people. All he does is try to divide us with unforgiveness and strife and discord. He tries to get us to walk in unbelief and anger. But we have the weapons to destroy his strongholds, the high things that exalt himself against the true knowledge of God's revelation. What is the true knowledge of God? Fear not, I am with you. I am with you until the end of the age. I will be with you in trouble, the word says. The psalm says that, amen? Amen? So right now the whole world is allowing fear to grip their hearts, but the church has the answer. And it is fear not, I'm with you. If God is with us, who can be against us? If God is with us, what can come against us? Paul said that. I like to say, if God is for us, who dare come against us? So right now, with all the fear being felt in the world, we can live in His presence. Amen? I believe that we can live in God's presence. And it goes back to the very first verse of Psalm 91. What does Psalm 91 say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty. I had a niece, and when she was a little girl, she discovered her shadow. And you know what she did? She took off running. <laughs> she thought somebody was chasing her, Kathy. <laughs> and she was so cute. And we had to get Kathy and say, Kathy, it's your shadow. And we had to explain to her, it's your shadow. <laughs> and she, she, at first she didn't believe it. She said, there's somebody chasing me. <laughs> well, right here, the Bible says, God is our shadow. In other words, He's always with us. He's always right behind you so that you can see His shadow. Isn't that a good analogy or a good illustration? His presence is the most important part of our lives. You know, when I've gone through trials, I told you when I've been sick, I find myself 
because I'm home in bed or I'm home, I'm home not feeling well, I find myself spending a lot of time talking to the Lord. Lord, heal me. Lord, touch me. Lord, let this thing pass. Lord, then I start realizing there's somebody else probably in worse shape than me. So then I, I start praying in self-pity and then I start interceding for, I said, Lord, there's somebody in worse shape than I am. This is just the flu or the flu. I'm going to give you some statistics in a little bit. Uh, but the flu is nothing to mess with. You know, did you know in 2018, 80,000 Americans died of the flu? So when I've been sick, and how many have had the flu? It's horrible, amen? Don't you feel like you're dying? <laughs> it is horrible. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, thank God I, you know, I haven't gotten the flu that much, but... You know, I remember when I was a little kid, I must have been Jacob's age, and I got the measles, and it was the long measles that lasted for like 10 days. And I was home in bed, and mom had to work, and everybody else was at school, and I was home alone. Like the movie Home Alone? Except I didn't have all the neat stuff that he had, and he was feeling great, you know. But I was feeling miserable. And mom would come home from work early, and she'd you know, give me something to eat. She'd give me something to eat in the morning. But, you know, we just didn't have daycare. We didn't have a family member. And I was miserable. And I, I had these dreams. I remember one dream, I was running and a bunch of coffins were like dominoes, like stacked up behind me and they were falling right behind me. I kept running and the coffins kept, yeah, I must have had a really high fever, but it was a weird. And I hadn't seen any movies. I mean, TV, nobody had TV when I was that age. You know, at least we didn't. And I, it was horrible. So when I've been afflicted with, when I'm home or when I've been in the hospital, man, I had a lot of time to pray. And to talk to the Lord. And to really get into God's presence. And I believe that when right now there's a lot of people home. There are some people that are home alone. Some elderly that are home alone. Amen. And this is a time. I heard one, uh, one government official say. This is a time to, to serve. This is a time to help somebody. You know, and I know people are saying, well, you don't get too close and all that. I understand all that. Be safe. But it's also a time where we can call somebody, amen? How are you doing? Do you need anything? Do you need groceries? You know, you need food. Amen? I mean, there could be somebody that's really scared and maybe they're out of work. And thank God, it seems like the government is, this week is going to do something to, to help families that are hurting right now financially and businesses. And thank God we have a nation that can do that, amen? Because in some nations, when these things happen, you're on your own, amen? I mean, it's like there is, you know, no help or hope. And I've been to some of these nations, and it's so sad. We, should, we used to give uh, some of the, when we were in the Philippines, and uh, we'd give them our sea rations, and you thought that we had given them a million dollars. They were so happy. Just little boxes of, and it, was, it wasn't that great of a food, but they were so happy when we gave them our sea rations. So in, in some nations, you know, they're really hurting. Amen? And our job is to pray for them. So you know somebody that's home sick, you know somebody that's home hurting, give them a call. You know, you might really make their day. So I really believe that right now is a great opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ to reach out and to touch somebody. <clears throat> so this is one of the statistics. There was a flu pandemic in 1918. Notice it was right around 100 years ago. And it killed more than 500,000 Americans. <clears throat> the flu uh, in 2011 and 12 killed 56,000 Americans, like I said, in 2017 and 18 flu season, which is normally from September to around March, April. Uh, it killed 80,000 Americans, uh, which was the highest in 40 years. Uh, in 2000, this year, 16,000 have died from the flu. Uh, 
So in 2018, approximately 4,000 people a week died in that flu season. Uh, the swine flu, the H1N1, remember that? Uh, it killed 575,000 people globally in America. Uh, it killed 12,469 people. The bubonic plague, how many have studied that in school? It killed 25 million people and continued to kill people for hundreds of years. It started in 1347 and it killed one third of the population of Europe. That's a lot of death and destruction. And we know how it started. It started with rats. And, and back then, of course, they didn't have what we have today. But uh, I, I share this, these statistics to keep it in perspective, not to make light of this coronavirus, but to keep it in perspective and for us to pray that God would move in and would start to turn the tide. How many believe if the children of people, if the children of people, if the children of God pray, we can see the tide turn? I believe that we can. <clears throat> so I'm not making light of COVID-19, this virus, but I believe that it's demonic and I believe that we can destroy it with prayer and I believe that we can pray for, as a matter of fact, I was watching a service online and one of the prophets in this service recently online said that we are going to hear of medical miracles in the uh, assault of this virus. And isn't it interesting that I was talking to, we went to the bank, Jonathan and I, and there was a Kenyan girl there working at the bank, and she was the one helping us to, with the account. Uh, and I said, I've noticed, I was looking at the, at the world map, and there aren't that many cases of this illness or this pandemic in Africa, only South Africa, which is the wealthiest nation in Africa. Then Nigeria is a very wealthy nation. And she said, you know why? And she says, I'm from Kenya. And she says, in Kenya, since we're little children, we take malaria pills. And she said, did you see that one doctor that said that malaria pills, that you took malaria pills, right, Eddie, overseas? And any other? You took, took them, Gabby? I took them too. They used to make me sick. <laughs> the big old pills, remember? <laughs> but it was hard to swallow. And then when you swallow them, man, it made you sick. But, you know, but it's, she says, because Africans take malaria pills, even when they're children, she says, this disease is really not affecting them that much. And so they came up, they found out that it's a malaria pill. All the people that they've tested, one guy from Stanford University, a medical uh, disease control expert, said that they made a study, and I think it was 40-some people that had this virus, and they all took this malaria pill, and they all responded positively like really fast and so uh, there is going to be a vaccine we know that a vaccine and that's what we need to pray for lord but what, is, what do they say they're taking a vaccine takes a year or longer but what if the church prays god can accelerate that whole process how many believe that Amen. where they will come up and there are other ways of treating it now they're making they're taking people who have the virus, taking some of their blood, and they're making antibodies. They're making, uh, and they can help and give that to some people who have the virus, and it's working. So there are other treatments that are working, and this is all I believe. Thank God for we have a great medical uh, system in our nation. Amen? It's the best in the world. We have some amazing doctors, scientists, nurses. I even, we have, a, my wife has a cousin, and he's one of them, how do you say the word? <laughs> yeah, one of them guys, <laughs> epidemiologists, and uh, that's what he does, and so there's, there's some warfare going on, and it's our opportunity to pray for a cure, and not only that, we can pray if a person, if you know a person that gets the coronavirus, we can pray for them to be healed. 
And it's interesting that a lot of the people who have gotten the virus are, have recovered already. Amen? They rec because of the great medical care that they're getting. So, with all the hysteria, somebody has to be calm. Somebody has to be level-headed. Somebody has to be full of peace, full of love, and full of faith. And that's our opportunity. Amen? Amen? Amen. That is a great opportunity. So I believe that, this, look at this statistic. The call is a youth prayer movement. Lou Engels, I heard him uh, in person at, at uh, Grace Chapel a few years ago. Pastor John called me and said, you need to come and hear this guy. And, and he works with young people and he uh, has a movement and they have had 400,000 young people show up for a prayer meeting. Isn't that cool? They've had 70,000 show up at Texas Stadium for a prayer meeting. And he has enlisted 69,000 prayer warriors to fast right now in the midst of this horrible crisis in the world to fast for 40 days. So if we're saying, can you fast a meal? We can fast a meal. Can you fast a day? Some of us can fast a day. Amen. And so 69 people, 69,000, not 69, 69,000 have signed up to fast for 40 days. And I believe that the, word, the Word's promise, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I mean, if you fast for 40 days, man, you're telling the flesh, you're not in control, buddy. Amen. How many know that it is hard to fast? I don't like to fast. When I was younger, I used to fast a lot, a lot more than I do now. But I do fast. And sometimes it's uh, like an hour. <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> I, I mean, Noni and I are the same way, man. I need snacks, you know. <laughs> I need to have something. during. Man, Mary Lou, sometimes she'll say, you're having lunch, it's only 10.30, you know. So anyway, I need to lead the way. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, before I heard of this report, the Lord says, it's time for you to do some fasting about this. Amen? So that's another weapon. You know, and what does fasting really do? It shows us how carnal we are, right? Man... Lord, it's only been two hours, you know. <laughs> I'm hungry, Lord. You know, but when we fast, we realize how dependent we are on our body's needs. And what it does to me is I have to discipline myself to say no to my body. Say, you're not going to eat for the next 45 minutes. I'm joking with you guys, all right? Just want to make light of it. But you're not going to eat for the next so much period of time and it's time for you to spend time with me. So when you find yourself think, thinking about eating, start meditating on God's word. Start worshiping the Lord. Get into the presence because fasting is meant, it's designed to get us into the presence of the Lord. And when we can get into the presence of the Lord, good things will happen. If 69,000 people, most of them young people, are going to fast for 40 days, that's going to give a lot of people time to get into the presence of the Lord. And who knows what God will do? Amen? You know, people are saying, well, where did this virus start. It started in China. It started here. China said it started with our military. They went over there and spread that disease or that virus. Uh, it started in hell. And I believe we as the church of Jesus Christ need to send it back where it came from. Do we have the power? Amen. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, 
But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It is the devil who kills, who steals, and who destroys. So Satan is a thief, the liar, the destroyer. Amen? So let's not allow him to destroy people, nations. Amen? Jesus said, I will build my church and the powers of the infernal regions will not be able to prevail against it. Will not be, one translation says, will not be able to stop it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. What does binding and loosing really mean? Binding means whatever you declare unlawful on earth. So we can say, Lord, this disease is unlawful on earth. Take your authority, take your keys, and say, in Jesus' name, you're unlawful. And then we can say, Lord, now send the healing. However you're going to do it, we have the keys to unlock the healing. Send the virus vaccine to some scientist. Send the answer to somebody who's been praying. Heal that person. We have the power to do it. So we've been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And we can win this war. Let's look at our weapons and then we'll close. Our first and our greatest weapon that we have right now as a body of Christ is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is God's number one priority in heaven. When we go to heaven, what are we going to see? We're going to see the throne of God. We're going to see the lamb that was slain. Amen? The book of Revelation tells us. Or we're going to see the one who gave his life. Or the one who shed his blood. So right now, I'm praying, Lord, cover my family with your blood. Cover the people at Sun Life with your blood. My first responsibility is to my family and to you guys. And I'm praying, Lord, Cover the people at Sun Life with your blood. And then I say, cover Tucson with your blood. Cover Pima County with your blood. How many know how many people in Pima Pima County have been afflicted? This morning I saw the latest report, nine people. I'm praying, Lord, keep it low. Amen? How many agree that we can keep it low? Lord, Cover America with your blood. Lord, cover Italy with your blood. Lord, cover France. Italy, France, Germany, I mean uh, Spain are hurting. Lord, cover China. Lord, cover England. Lord, cover Europe. Lord, continue to cover, cover Iran. Cover the Middle East. Cover Israel. Cover Africa. Cover India. And we we start just going. And as we're praying, I don't know about you, but I'm praying for the nations. Amen? And so that's our first weapon, the blood of Jesus. Notice this brother, this this prophet, a year ago, he said, we were going to see an epidemic and it would last until Passover of this year. When's Passover? Easter. Easter. And so I believe that if we pray, we can see it come to a halt. We can see the amount of people that have it start tailing off. We can see people that have been afflicted start getting better. We can see medications, medicines discovered that are going to help people. And so we pray The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Right now, the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray the blood of Jesus to cover every single person in this place. All our families, our friends, our co-workers. Let the blood of Jesus cover them. Let it cover Tucson. Let it cover Pima County. Let it cover Arizona. Lord, I was reading the the statistics. 
It's hit the reservation in Arizona up north. We pray for the reservation right now. We pray that you would cover them with the blood. Maricopa County, Cochise County, Conconino County, Santa Cruz County, all the counties, Pinnell, all the counties in Arizona, Graham County. We pray for all these counties for them to be covered with the blood. We pray for the blood of Jesus to cover America. We pray for the blood of Jesus to cover this hemisphere. Canada, Mexico, Central America, South America. Pray the blood of Jesus to cover Europe. I pray the blood of Jesus to cover those hard-hit nations in Europe. The Middle East. Africa. India. Asia. Malaysia. Southeast Asia. All the Asian countries, Father. The islands. That the blood of Jesus cover them right now. Our second weapon is the name of Jesus. Or the word of God. We need the revelation of the word of God. I already gave you those figures. The word of God is a weapon. The Bible says it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Use the word of God. Get a promise from the word of God and start speaking those promises over this situation. The third weapon is the name of Jesus. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Another weapon is a agreement. Find somebody to agree with you. How many know somebody that agrees with the fact that Jesus can take this thing and destroy it? Find a believer that will agree and say, let's pray in agreement for this thing to be wiped out. You love the Lord? How many are going to go to war? We have mighty weapons. Fear not. Take up. Your weapons. Take these weapons that we gave you this morning. Pray the blood of Jesus every time you, ch- you get a chance. Over the president, the vice president, their team, the doctors, the nurses, the people that are out there working. Pray the blood of Jesus to protect them. The people that are home thinking, pray the blood of Jesus will, will and that people will start getting saved as a result. I believe that we can see the greatest revival hit not only America, but the world, because this is worldwide. Amen? Father, thank you for your word. We pray the blood of Jesus to cover us, our loved ones, this church, all the churches in this city, and down the line, all the way to around the world. Let the blood of Jesus, let, let this revelation hit the church, the mighty weapons that we have to destroy every stronghold, every attack in Jesus' name. Lord, I come against the spirit of fear. I come against anxiety in Jesus' name. I pray now the spirit of faith would be given to your people. That we will not walk in fear. That we will not be full of anxiety. That we will be at peace as we keep our mind on you. You said, I will keep you in perfect peace. And Lord, help us to minister to somebody who's afraid right now. Help us to minister and share your love to somebody who's hurting right now. We also pray for people who've lost their jobs or businesses that are not in operation right now. We pray that you give our leaders the right strategy on what type of program to put together to help these many businesses that are really hurt as a result and Americans who are hurting right now financially. I pray for supernatural miracles in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Thanks for coming this morning. You can stand. We have a song. Yeah, but can we sing it? We don't have music, so we're going to sing uh, What Can Wash Away Our Sins. Okay. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the flow 
Jesus. Don't forget to read these, all right? God bless you. Have a great week. Keep praying, amen? Keep fighting a good fight. We love you guys. Have a great day. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus is over us. Amen.